Punch Showdown is a pretty unforgiving game. So if you are new to the game or you haven't played in a while and you're coming back to it, this video is for you. So today we are going over five tips for Hunt Showdown newbies. Let's get into it. Number one, learning the spawn points so you don't get erased at the beginning of the match. So you spawn into any game and you open your map. And if you look, any of these little roads that are on the edge of the map, there can be a team that spawns there. So there's tons and tons and tons of spawn points across the map. And sometimes you just get unlucky and you can get a double spawn. So people spawning right next to each other or even a triple spawn. But the spawn points are always at the edge of the map. Nobody will ever spawn in the middle. So always, always, always when you spawn into a game, make sure you check your right and your left to make sure that you don't have a team laying in wait, ready to take you out at the very beginning of the match. Number two, using dark sight effectively. Dark sight allows you to see clues. It allows you to see people with the bounty. It allows you to track objectives. However, using dark sight takes away your vision from the rest of the map. So when you're using dark sight, you cannot see other hunters. You cannot see, uh, you can't see other mobs. You can't see anything because it's in that muted gray coloring. Make sure that while you are using dark sight that you are behind some sort of cover, but can still see what you're looking for and don't stay in dark sight. Just use it long enough to see what you're looking for. Look for a clue, you know, point yourself in the right direction to look for the bounty, whatever it might be, and then immediately get out of it because it does significantly hinder your vision. I see a lot of new players staying in dark sight far too long and they've actually been put in a real disadvantage because they are staying in dark sight too long. When you're using dark sight to track hunters and quick play, um, or when you have a bounty token, if you hold dark sight, the orange echo of the hunter will actually swirl in a very wide range of where the person is actually located. However, when you first hit the dark sight, the initial location is actually going to be your most accurate. So if you're just holding it to see where they're at, you're actually going to lose a lot of your accuracy of where they are. So the tip for this, just hit it quickly and it will pinpoint roughly where that person is at. The longer you hold it, you're going to it's going to skew and you're not going to be able to track them as easily. Number three, the different monster types that you will run into when you're in the bayou. The monsters in Hunt Showdown are not to be taken lightly. They can kill you just as easily and more shamefully than if you die to another player. So there are different types of monsters. There are grunts, hives, immolators, armored, hellhounds, and meatheads. And we're gonna cover them all individually. Starting with grunts, the grunts are your typical zombie. Hunt Showdown did a really good job with generating random movement with the grunts. So no matter what they're doing, they're they're gonna be moving very sporadically and randomly. So sure they walk at you, they'll they'll run at you, um, but their uh, their head movements and body movements uh, except for like when they're attacking you and stuff are completely random. Uh, grunts can be by themselves. They can be with other grunts. There are several different type of grunts. There is just your standard zombie grunt who hits you with his fists. There are grunts that have cleavers that will do bleed damage. There are uh, medic grunts medic zombies they will do poison damage but when you kill them they will drop a uh, world heal med kit there are grunts that carry lanterns if the lantern is on and they hit you with it you will instantly start burning and lose uh <clears throat> you'll lose health bars and potentially permanently lose one there are grunts that carry torches that will do the same thing there are grunts that carry uh 
a broken pistol that will fire a shot and alert other hunters if they hit you with it. Uh, grunts can be taken out fairly easily. Um, if you have any sort of melee weapon and hit them in the head, then you're good. Heavier weapons such as the heavy knife, the machete, the saber, uh, those can be light attacked and take zombies out. They're not a huge threat, but they do make an aggro noise. So if there are other hunters in the proximity and they hear an, a zombie get aggroed, they will be drawn to your attention. The next is hives. Hives are kind of a pain in the butt. They are very loud uh, and they have these really annoying bees that will poison you. Uh, you can kite the bees with, if you are uh, running towards the hive. Always run at an angle and you will kite the bees to avoid more damage. Um, and the thing to know about hives is the head is actually not on top of the body. It is on the side. The thing that looks like a head sticking straight up, that's actually a beehive that has erupted from their chest. Come to find out. That was one of the first things that I had to learn and died to when I first started playing Hunt Showdown was the hive's head is on the side. The next one being immolators. Immolators are fiery, angry bastards. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Uh, immolators have the widest aggro range. They are loud. They are fast. You cannot outrun immolators. And the important thing with immolators is you have to use blunt melee damage in order to kill them. So using dusters, using the butt of your gun, just using your fists, uh, whatever it is, if they get pierced. So if you shoot them, if you stab them, anything that will pierce their skin, they will erupt immediately burning away 25, uh, 25 health points. So if you have a small bar, it's immediately gone, per permanently burned. And then they do additional fire damage, attack faster, and they will uh, they'll beat you up really quickly. So make sure that if you're taking out emulators that you get the jump on them, use blunt damage and you shouldn't have too much of a problem. And don't try to run from them. The next one being Hellhounds. Hellhounds very rarely will be by themselves. They typically run as a pack. They take a decent amount of damage in order to kill them. So using a knuckle knife or dusters will take two hits. Make sure that you attack them with a regular knife or something heavier like that in order to kill them with one. Headshots do work, but that can potentially be loud. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm using a hand crossbow, so it's quiet. But hellhounds will run at you and then leap. So the timing can be a little funky if you're trying to take them head on. But hellhounds as a pack will swarm you and they do bleed damage. So make sure that you uh, Take all of the hellhounds out before you stop the bleeding. Otherwise, you're caught with your pants down trying to mend your mend your wounds and then they'll just beat you up even more. The next one is armors. Armors are big, loud, angry people and they will mog you. Armors hit very hard if you get hit by them. They will do, I believe it is 45 damage per swing. It's a lot. They will take out one of your big bars and some additional health after that. Um, armors take three hits with a medium weapon like a knife and armors can also spawn with concertina wire around them that the concertina wire applies additional protection to them so they take more hits to actually drop. And again, with bleeding damage, make sure you actually kill it before you start mending your wounds. Armors can break down doors, so if you're running from an armored and you close a door and you think you're safe, you're not. Uh, any sliding door or door that you can open normally, they can break that through. However, the the iron gates that use the wheel to open, you're safe behind those. But other than that, armors can and will break down doors because they want to eat you. The next one is meatheads. Meatheads are one of the easiest to avoid, but the worst ones to get aggroed onto you. 
So the thing with meatheads is they have no sensory triggers. So you cannot trigger them with sound like any of the other mobs. You cannot trigger them with movement. However, the eels that are crawling around that spawn out of its body are what the meathead uses to track and kill hunters. Meatheads also have a poison sense, so anything that is poisoned is immediately able to be tracked. So if you are poisoned near a meathead, it's going to come after you. Meatheads take a lot of damage. They are extremely hard to kill, and for the most part, they're best avoided. However, meatheads offer an extremely high amount of experience. They can be easily taken out with a dynamite stick or a bomb lance. One hit from those will drop them. And meatheads also have the chance to drop traits. I don't know the exact percentage, but if you kill a meathead, there's a chance that it will drop a trait for you. They can drop any trait and it is at random. So I have seen meatheads drop doctor, which takes eight trait points. It's a very expensive trait. And I've also seen them drop one point traits like kite skin. The last one that I forgot to mention earlier is water devils. Water devils are the bane of any hunter's existence and should be avoided at all costs. One of them died. One of them died to water devils. Water devils are very loud. They will trigger an audio warning when you get close. It's mildly quiet. But if you step into the water, they will aggro and they make a very loud screech that can be heard from a very long way away, alerting other hunters. They also slow, they cause bleed, and they hit very hard. If you get caught in the water by water devils, you're either A, going to take a lot of damage, or B, you're going to die. Water devils can be, uh, can be killed, but they respawn very quickly. If you kill one water devil, it will... Uh, despawn all of them in a particular area for a very short time, allowing you safe passage across oh, whatever water yeah. you're trying to get through. Rizzing you a little challenging. Are you fucking kidding me? But be warned that they do respawn very quickly. And unfortunately, no, you cannot farm XP off of Water Devils. After you kill them the second time, uh, the XP has diminishing returns very quickly. And after I, I believe it's after the fifth one, they offer no more experience in that body of water. So if you kill Water Devils in a particular river or creek that you're passing, you only get five of them to offer you experience, and then all of the water devils in that body of water will no longer offer experience. So they are not worth farming. It's not even worth your time. That was definitely a lot to cover. So if you are still hanging out, guys, thank you so much. And it would mean the world to me if you slap the like button. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Continuing on, number four, sound traps how to use them to your advantage, and potentially how to avoid them. There are sound traps placed throughout the Bayou maps. There are murders of crows. There are injured horses laying on the ground. There are sticks that you can break. There are glass shards on the ground. There are cans on the ground. There's chains hanging. There are all sorts of sound traps that are placed around the maps that can either be your demise or the demise of other teams. The easiest way to avoid the majority of these sound traps is to make sure that you are crouch walking. Yes, it is slower, but you are quieter and you will not set off nearly as many of these sound traps. So when you're passing murders of crows and you don't have any other option to skirt them, just crouch walk and you can get relatively close to them without setting them off. Same thing with uh, the injured horses. They will, you know, they'll spring up and they'll neigh and you can either, you know, melee them in the head or shoot them in the head with something silenced, uh, like you see here with the hand crossbow. Um, as far as like the, the garbage and the fodder on the ground, crouch walking over it, 
lessens the sound. It doesn't eliminate it, but it lessens it. Uh, as well as like the hanging buckets and chains and stuff that you can walk through. Uh, the sound is significantly cut down when you're crouch walking through it. Also, with the Murders of Crows, when they do get set off, they will fly in the direction opposite of where they were triggered from. So if you are walking straight into a Murder of Crows, they are going to fly in the opposite direction. So if you hear a Murder of Crows go off and you see them flying, you know roughly what direction that the person who triggered them was moving in. I also want to add that f taking fall damage is its own sound trap. Whenever your character falls and you take damage, you actually let out a grunt or, you know, an uh, uh. <laughs> And when that happens, if you are the one taking that, the enemy now knows that you have less health and vice versa. So if you hear an enemy fall, you know that they have fallen, they have less health, and you can sometimes take advantage of that. And lastly, number five, voice chat and just proximity audio in general. Hunt Showdown has one of the best, if not the best, audio system out of any game I have ever played. The audio in Hunt Showdown is so freaking good that you can hear people walking. You can hear them crouched. You can hear them running. You can hear them go, you know, walking through water. You can hear these sound traps from really far away and, and it's accurate. Like it, it sounds exactly like as far away as it actually is. So make sure that if you're using proximity chat, if you're playing with randoms or, you know, whatever, that they can hear exactly where you're at and vice versa too. So if these guys are talking to you and you can hear, you know, where they're at, you can shoot them through walls and they can shoot you through walls. The proximity chat and the audio in general for Hunt Showdown is so good. Take advantage of it. It will not let you down. I promise. More often than not, I find where enemy hunters are by audio more so than visual. So get yourself a nice headset. It's going to make this game significantly better. The headset that I use is the Steel Series Arctic Pro. I am not sponsored by them, so this is not a paid promotion. So I highly recommend anything from the Steel Series lineup as far as headsets go. Guys, that is it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today with this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And we will see you in our next live stream, which will be on Saturday. Until then, tell somebody you believe in them because I believe in you. And we will see you in the next one. Peace out.